Cultivating alternate energy sources is a hot issue these days, but not everyone is in favor of harvesting the wind. We'll explain why. And if you're looking for the scoop on your soil, we'll explain where you can find it. We'll also tell you how Texas and national foreclosure levels compare, and why an increasing number of retirees from all over the country are spending their golden years in the Lone Star State. Hi, I'm Edie Craig with the Real Estate Center at Texas A&M University. Welcome to this edition of TG to Go. Wind power may be drawing interest as an alternate energy source, but it's also drawing more than its share of controversy. Perhaps the most vocal opposition is coming from environmentalists who have raised concerns about birds dying after colliding with wind turbine blades. Meanwhile, other groups allege the towers are noisy and obstruct scenic views. Lawsuits against both the landowners and those leasing the land for wind farms are cropping up. Legal ambiguity is also raising questions, such as whether wind farm developers are eligible for property tax abatements. Look for the state legislature to address this issue in 2009. Finally, the capacity to generate electricity in the favorable wind regions currently exceeds the capacity to transport it where it is needed. It takes about one year to build a wind farm and five years to build transmission lines. And until more lines are built, some wind-generated power will remain untapped. The USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service has a website that can help you determine a property's uses and income potential. The Web Soil Survey is at the address shown on the screen. To begin, click on Start WSS. Using the Quick Navigation or Interactive Map Panel, specify the geographic boundaries of the target property. After zeroing in on an area, click the Rectangular Area of Interest tab at the top to trace an outline of the property with a cursor. Click on the Soil Map tab for a list of the property's soil types. Then select the Soil Data Explorer tab, where you'll find an abundance of information on soil characteristics that impact land use. To generate a custom soil resource report, click Shopping Cart, then Check Out. The website is free. Dig in. Texas was one of only six states that reported a decrease in total delinquency and foreclosure filings last year. According to RealtyTrack, total filings dropped 4.6 percent here. Nationally, filings increased 75 percent. During the first half of 2008, Texas's filings totaled 70,180, up 1 percent, compared with a national increase of 61 percent to 1.4 million filings. Based on notices of trustee sales and foreclosure sales, 42,705 Texas properties were posted for foreclosure during the first half of 2008. That's a 17.7 percent drop from the first half of 2007. Meanwhile, foreclosure postings were up 27.3 percent to 462,418 nationally. An ever-growing number of people are moving to Texas to enjoy their retirement. According to U.S. Census Bureau data, Texas attracted 26,636 out-of-state retirees aged 65 and older in 2005, putting it neck and neck with Arizona. The total income of these retirees was nearly $732.5 million. According to officials with the Texas Department of Agriculture's Rural Economic Development Division, retiree households spend an average of $36,000 a year in their communities and pay an average of $3,000 in state and local taxes. 
Baby boomer retirees bring even more to the table economically. One in five relocates on retirement, and nationally, well-educated boomers have an annual spending power of $2.3 trillion. To attract retirees, the Texas Department of Agriculture has implemented the Go Texans Certified Retirement Community Program. For information, visit www.retireintexas.org. These stories and more are in the October 2008 issue of Tierra Grande Magazine. It's online at recenter.tamu.edu. Thanks for watching.